<clears throat> oh, welcome to the Wrestling Replay. It's Kato here with your AEW Dynamite Replay of the Week. Now, I said last week that this week coming up would be probably better than last week's episode and didn't disappoint. This episode was, once again, um, amazing. Um, an- another amazing um, show put on by AEW Dynamite. Can't discriminate, can't hate. Um, but let's go ahead and jump right into it, guys. Now, the show kicks off with Brian Cage versus Heyman Page, right? Before the match, Page was attacked by Team Taz, which probably weakened him up a little bit before the match with um, Brian Cage, a match that he lost. Now, this was a big match. I mean, this is your number one contender, Heyman Page, who's been on a roll, who's been on a hot streak, losing to someone who's pretty close to him in the ranking system, Brian Cage that had to propel Brian Cage to that number one spot, right? Now, I'm sure the attack had had um had to do with um the win had to do with the attack from Heyman Page prior to the match. Um, so we possibly should get a rematch between these two sometime in the future. I'm hoping, but I did notice backstage where uh, Taz was doing his interview talking about Christian Cage, which possibly could set up a match between Christian Cage. And Brian Cage, where if he defeats him, if Christian Cage can defeat Brian Cage, that's going to propel Christian even higher up on the ranking system right now. He would have pretty much defeated the the number one ranked guy. So where would that put him being a undefeated wrestler on the roster right now, defeating your number one guy? Um, even Taz has brought brought to the attention of everybody that hey, Will Hobbs had you beat, and um. He pretty much just made one mistake, and you capitalized on it. You being the veteran, you being the veteran, you capitalized on his mistake and managed to get the win. Now, I was saying last week, this is exactly how I wanted to see Christian booked out versus the younger talent, using his veteran savviness to um, capitalize on the mistakes that they make in the match, and that's how he win the matches. So, um, we'll, we'll have to see what we're going to get from that. Uh, the next match we had, uh, Mike and Matt Seidel versus uh, Mac and Nick, the Young Bucks, Tag Team Champions, and I have to say, I was pretty impressed by the Sado Brothers. This is a tag team who um, I look to see more of in the future going uh, into AEW. Max Sidell's been on the scene for a long time, so I like the fact that him being with his brother, uh, Mike, is going to actually kind of like, you know, reinvent his career a little bit as a tag team's wrestler, and I think that, you know, this is a team that we could possibly see later on down the line get a shot for those AEW tag team titles. This is a exciting tag team to watch. Um, I can't wait to these guys mix it up with teams like, you know, a, like a four-way tag team between like a private party, Young Bucks, the Side Elves, and, and, and FTR, something like that, man. That, that would be a crazy four-way tag team match. And with these guys having the tag team uh, talent that they do in their roster, the AEW that is, they're only going to put on you know better matchups and matches. So that's one leg up I think AEW has on um, a lot of promotions right now is their tag team wrestling. Who they now after the match, the Young Bucks did get the victory over the Sidell brothers. They were confronted by Kazarian and Christopher Daniels. This was a team that said if we ever lose again as a tag team, we will never team up again. So. It's going to be interesting with these guys being the number one contenders for the tag team titles if they beat the Young Bucks. If they beat the Young Bucks, okay, now we have two more guys that can actually possibly team up to help take on the elite, right? To help get people fair matches when they're going against the champion one-on-one. If they lose, we will see the split of Christopher Daniels and Kazarian. Now, we've been seeing these guys wrestle in single matches mostly anyway recently, but... I mean, the fact that they will never, ever be able to team up again, that's pretty big. We also got to see Orange Cassidy defeat Pentagon Jr. The feud between the best friends and the Death Triangle is still continuing. Um, Orange Cassidy did get a little help from Trent with the microphone he used to uh, put away Pentagon Jr. But this is one of the feuds I like. I like this feud. I, I like the match we're going to be able to get between Death Triangle and best friends. And he got a score to settle anyway. Now, we also got to see... Uh, Chris Statline, Statline, she's finally back in action. She uh, defeated Penelope Ford in a singles match. She's looking good. She's looking healthy. I'm happy to have her back in that women's division. Now, after that, we did get to see the Fat Three versus members of the Nightmare family, being uh, Lee Johnson, Dustin Rose, and Billy Gunn. They did not get the job done. Like I said before, I really like this feud. This is one of my favorite feuds going on right now 
in AEW. And um, I, I, I got to take my hats off to him, man. Like, I didn't see the factory coming. This is one of the uh, factions that was put together that I really didn't, you know, have on my radar. But now that they're here, this is one of the best factions, I think, that's in AEW right now. They all look legit. They all look like they're hungry contenders, and they have a legit meaning for being together and, and doing what they're doing. Now, granted, they did get the, get, get the victory by uh, Anthony Agogo with those rib shots that he likes to deliver. Managed to help QT Marshall get the pin. But after the match, where things really picked up because we got to see the return of Cody Rhodes. That's right. Cody finally made his return. Came off the nightmare bus. And uh, him and the gun club pretty much helped clean house. So that, that was really exciting to see because now you know that we're going to get Cody Rhodes. He's back in the fold. We got the whole Nightmare family back. The Fat Three is fully healthy. Right now, we got a situation where the Pinnacle and the Circle, they're having their match and having their feud. Once that's done and that's cleaned up and out the way, it makes perfect uh, room for the Fat Three and Nightmare family to do their thing. I, I think they should do some type of War Games type matchup. Cody has always said that he's wanted certain WW, WCW uh, pay-per-views and events back. I think uh, War Games... If they somehow could put a, a, a little spin on it so it's not like the way NXT has it right now, maybe stack the cages up like WCW used to do, I think this would be the perfect match for these two factions to actually settle the score of what they need to scuttle, settle. Once again, in the main event, we had Darby Allen defending his TNT title. This time, he went against 10 of the Dark Order. Uh, 10 just wasn't enough. He wasn't enough for Darby Allen. Like I said before, I don't think anyone's going to be enough for Darby Allen in a single one-on-one -on -one matchup. Um, I'm waiting for the Lance Archer and Darby Allen to be set up. I think that's going to have to be a pay-per-view style matchup because I think uh, Darby can outlast Lance Archer in a um, TV title match where all he needs is the TV time to aspire before the match is over. So this is definitely going to have to be like a pay-per-view style matchup. Now, I also see um, things finally taking shape, man. Fi finally, you know, coming into fu uh, fruition like I wanted to. Miro, you got to see him turn on Kip Sabian. Kip Sabian and the Miro tag team has just been holding Miro back from this singles competition. Um, going after titles like he should be anyway, right? Next week, we're going to see John Mosley and Eddie Kingston finally get some revenge on... Uh, on Kenny Omega, though it'll be via a tag team match, they'll finally be able to get their hands on Kenny Omega. Hopefully, this is where um, the Good Brothers come in and maybe start a feud between the Good Brothers and Kenny and, and John Mosley. Sorry, a Good Brother, a feud between the Good Brothers, Mosley, and Eddie Kingston. So that'll have those people out the way, which will have a clear path for someone to take on Kenny Omega one on one for his AEW championship. And then up in the air of who's going to be Heyman Page. He's just gotten out off his winning streak. Um, Brian Cage is the number one contender. I don't see them two matching uh, up one-on-one, -on -one, though. And Christian Cage, who would be the obvious person for me, if he uh, defeats uh, Brian Cage, man, that clearly opened the door for me to see him and Kenny Omega one-on-one -on -one for that AEW championship. Um, what else we got? We got the pinnacle and the, the circle next week. That's going to be a crazy match. What is it? Uh, blood and glory or blood and guts, whatever the match is called. But that's going to be an amazing match. We finally get to see that feud ended and get to see these two factions go on about their day and uh, see where they're going to go moving forward. I don't see MGF going for the AEW Championship, but I can definitely see MGF somehow going after Darby Allin or Lance Archer, whoever the TNT champion may be when it's time for him to start making a move for a certain title, for a single title, I should say. So, AEW, once again, like, man, this, this, this week episode was fire. Like, leading up to... Yeah, uh, Pinnacle and End Circle match next week. They they really brought it. They really brought it between last week, this week, and next week. I think it's going to be just as good. So I'm really looking forward to it. Second week in a row, man. They they really really impressed me. Like I like AEW. Don't get me wrong, but I'm just really impressed by the show, how well it flowed, the matches, the storyline advancement, uh, the stories told inside the ring, stories told outside the ring. It wasn't. You know, too much, um, you know, uh, segments going on. It, it, everything had a purpose. And I, I just like the way they're flowing right now. So they're on the road. They're on the hot streak. Um, let me know what you guys think. What do you feel about this episode of AEW? 
How, what do you feel about next week? Who do you think is going to win between the pinnacle and the circle? Who do you want to win match between the pinnacle and the circle? Who do you think is the better faction between the Fat Three and the Nightmare Family? I know they got Cody Rhodes, but I'm telling you that Fat Three, man, like they got some young guns that's going. I think are really going to lead the uh, AEW flagship into the future. You know, so I, I want to hear from you guys, man. You know, you know the rules. DM comments let me know what you guys think about this week episode and next week and who do you want to see face kenny omega brian cage christian cage or Heyman page yeah that, that rhyme that's crazy but anyway kenny omega got he, he got to start defending that uh aw championship we need to see a clear-cut number one contender start to come out and really you know challenge the champion so we can see what's going to happen going forward honestly he got his hands for us with moxley and uh eddie kingston but that's all the more reason that Someone will go and try to challenge the champion right now while he's distracted and worried about so many other different things going on. All right. Let me know what you guys think, though. Make sure you drop a like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. And if you're not following the uh, Wrestling Replay Instagram, make sure you follow at the Wrestling Replay, all one word. We're going to be starting out giveaway once we hit 100 sub uh, subscribers. So please make sure you're following there because that's where I'm going to pretty much give everything out. Um, tell you what we're going to give away, and I'm going to tell you how to actually win that prize. All right. So, that was your AEW Dynamite replay of the week. I have more posted in the description down below. I'm Kato signing out. Peace.